So, I'm pretty sure we've all seen a science fiction movie or book about time travel at some point in our lives, whether it be Back to the Future or the famous novel The Time Machine by H.G. Wells we all loved as a child. But have you ever wondered if this is all just fantasy, fiction, just mere imagination? Is there a possibility in which it could be possible? And if so, how will it affect the world? Before we dive straight in, let's make sure we all actually understand what time travel is. Time travel is basically a discrepancy between time and time. It's when the separation of time between departure and arrival does not equal the duration of the journey. Firstly, we have to understand the Einstein's theory of relativity, which is a key theory in the idea of time travel. There are actually two theories, which is the special theory of relativity and the theory of general relativity. But basically, it states that space and time are interwoven into what is known as space-time. Einstein concluded that time must change according to the speed of an object relative to the frame of difference for an observer. So in the special theory of relativity, it stated that the speed of light is constant for all observers traveling at 300,000 kilometers per second, and that objects moving at constant speed should be subject to the same physical laws. Now this may sound very complicated, but stay with me. So, for example, if I'm playing catch with my friend and I'm running at 15 miles per hour with a ball in my hand, it is obvious that relative to me, the ball will not be moving until I throw it. But relative to my friend who is standing still further away, standing still and observing me, the ball would be moving at 15 miles per hour as I'm holding and running with it. So now let's get to the interesting part. How might time travel be possible? The first theoretical method is the wormhole. A wormhole connects two points in space through a higher dimension, meaning that an object that enters from one end of the wormhole would appear at the other end almost instantaneously, even if the openings were separated by trillions and trillions of miles. However, scientists know that if wormholes were to exist, they would evaporate before anything, even light can pass through them. And also, wormholes are most likely needed to be artificially created, because there are no evidence of them existing naturally. As the physicist Kip Thorne has stated in his book The Science of the Interstellar, that we see no object in space that could become wormholes as they age. He also theorized that to make a wormhole traversable or to make traveling through space-time using a wormhole possible, some form of negative energy would be required. In quantum physics, this comes in the form of the Casimir energy. So, what is the Casimir energy? The Casimir energy was first predicted in 1948 by a Dutch physicist called Hendrik Casimir. It can be observed when two metal plates are faced together in a vacuum and some of the vacuum fluctuations will fit in between them bouncing back and forth while others will not. As we move the mirrors closer and closer together, the longer waves will no longer be able to fit. And therefore, it will mean that the amount of energy in between the plates would be slightly less than anywhere else in the vacuum. And considering that the amount of energy anywhere else in the vacuum is zero, the amount of energy in between the plates will be negative. So I'll explain how this works next. So although there are arguments as to wormholes not existing, there are counter-arguments saying that all just more wormholes do in fact exist, continuously winking into and out of existence. Some have suggested that these can be stabilized and expanded using the Casimir effect by placing two superconducting metal spheres in the mouth of the wormholes, which will act like the metal plates with the throat of the wormhole in between. This means that a locally mass negative region of space-time will be created, and then each end of the wormhole can be transported somewhere light years away. Of course, this would mean that the initial trip will have to be taken in normal space-time, and therefore would be taken in sublight speeds. But if this were to be achieved, the trip wouldn't even take the long due to the effect of time dilation. Afterwards, instantaneous communication and transport through the wormhole would be possible. Another idea is using a cosmic string. A cosmic string is a hypothetical one-dimensional defect left over from the formation of the universe. Okay, that was a mouthful. Um, it was first theorized by Princeton physicist J. Richard Gott in 1991. If they, were to have it, if they were to exist, they would have an immense amount of gravitational pull, causing flame dragging. 
So the way this will work is that two cosmic strings, as they cross paths with each other at very high speed, will warp space-time. A ship can then take a very precise path and end back at its starting position. And this would allow time travel. However, cosmic strings again have, is not found, and even God himself stated that in order to travel just one year back in time, it would require a loop of string of a lot of energy. And by that, you would need half the mass energy of an entire galaxy. So another theoretical method is using a black hole. The way this would work is that a ship would move at very high speeds around the black hole, experiencing less time than anyone else further away from the black hole. And this works because a black hole has a very strong gravitational field, which doesn't even allow light to escape. And this causes time dilation. The problem here is that the spaceship will have to move in, in sublight speed, and if a person flies light into the black hole, you guys can guess what's going to happen to them. They're going to get crushed. But one unique variety might not, which is known as the Carr black hole, or the Carring, which was first theorized by Roy Carr in 1963. Its concept hinges on neutral stars that instead of collapsing at a center or a singularity, it will collapse into a rotating ring of neutron stars. And because of the lack of singularity, people think that it would be safe to enter them without the fear of being crushed by the infinite gravitational force that exists at the center of most black holes. And lastly, traveling at the speed of light may also be a solution. When you travel at very high speeds like the speed of light, your clock runs slow relative to the people that are not in motion. So if I'm on a spaceship that's traveling at 99.5% the speed of light, an observer looking into the spaceship would see the clock inside the spaceship moving to be about 10 times slower than normal and me in the spaceship moving in slow motion. So here comes mathematics. The amount of time dilation can be calculated by the Lorentz factor. And I know since not all of you are a fan of mathematics, I'm just going to save you from this. So when you travel at 25% the speed of light, your clock, um, the, th the factor is just 1.03, which is about a 3% slowing down in time. But when you travel at 99.999% the speed of light, the factor is 224. Experiments have shown this through an ultra-short-lived muon particle that habitually travels at about 99.92% the speed of light actually lives and travels up to 20, 25 times longer and further than it theoretically should. But all this talk about traveling in time creates, creates what is known as paradoxes. So paradoxes are situations in which, despite acceptable reasoning, leads to a conclusion where it's simply self-contradictory. One of the most famous time travel paradox is known as the grandfather's paradox. So consider this. You're a time traveler that goes back in time for an assassination, and the victim turns out to be your grandfather. If you pull the trigger and kill your own grandfather, what will happen to you? If then, then your grandparents wouldn't have had parent, your parents to have you. But there are ways in which these can be overcome. The post-selected model is one. It follows a Novikov self-consistency principle, stating that any changes to the timeline cannot be made because any alterations have already been made. So whatever happened, happened. So in the grandfather's paradox, you would just simply not be able to pull the trigger. Or even if you could, the gun would malfunction. The grandfather would be death-proof. Another way out of these paradoxes is the parallel universe and the multiverse theory. It was first published by Hugh Everett III, and the multiverse theory states that our universe is not the only one, and that there are many universes that exist in parallel with one another, the parallel universes, and that every single outcome of an event occurs at every single parallel universe. So, in the grandfather's paradox, the supposed grandfather would not be the assassin grandfather, because as soon as the assassin went back in time, he had been transported to another timeline. But if time travel was to become possible in the future, can it have negative side effects? Can it somehow destroy our universe? 
The radical rewrite conjecture is one idea. You can change history. So considering there's only one universe, history will be changed by one time traveler, then immediately changed by another. This means that your life will change every single day. Well, this could have positive effects such as going forward in time, seeing epidemic diseases and natural disasters, and saving lives of millions of people. What if it becomes accessible to a wider audience? And even if we can't make changes to the timeline, but we can only observe the past or the future, the rich may go forward in time, see technical advances and futuristic inventions, and use it for their own advantage. People will start challenging the beliefs that we have now, whether it's in religion or it's in, hi in just basic history. So people will see what we have to predict. So is time travel ethical? On a simpler note, consider this. Changing even one quarter of a second in time can change everything. I'm pretty sure we've all been in those situations where you're walking down the street and some car or motorcycle just zips past you and you think, if I was walking slightly quicker, I would have been killed. If, well, if a time traveler goes back, back in time and even altered even the slightest of events, you might have been killed. Around the same number of people will probably have been killed, but who dies and who lives will be different. And if a person who is a relative of Hitler who survived a near miss is killed, who would have had children, who would have had grandchildren to become parents of Hitler, Hitler would never have been born. Okay, I know this sounds extreme, but it's not really, considering that trillions upon trillions of events would have to be taken in the exact same way for Hitler to be born. And if he isn't born, the humongous history of the 20th century would be changed. So, if time travel was to become possible, are we predestined for chaos? I mean, even if we try to avoid the negative effects that may come with it, it's highly debatable if we, can, we actually have all the power to control every single aspect of the new technology. Somehow, people will start finding a way to use it for the worst, regardless of the original intentions of the inventor. So will time travel just be a cause of chaos? After all of this knowledge, what do you think? How many of you here still think that this is all just childish imagination? How many of you here think that there might be a possibility? But, but remember, as long as time travel remains undiscovered, childish imagination and maybe a little bit of quantum physics may just be the key to building up your very own time machine. Thank you.